Hello guys, this is Nobin Reddy. So today we'll talk about servlets or you can say a web programming using Java. So if we talk about servlets, the question arises why we need servlet in first place. See when you talk about a web page, it can be a static web page or it can be a dynamic web page. Now what a static web page is, if, if let's suppose you have a web server and that web server has some pages so as a client when you request for the page web server will check the ip or the the url and it will give the response right so depend upon the if that page exists it will give the page if that page doesn't exist it will give you an error but what if you have you want to do some processing on server side like if you want to add two numbers if you want to go for uh, to find a even number odd number or if you want to communicate with database in that case your web server which works with html and html has don't, don't have a power to communicate with it with database or to do any operations is because it's a markup language for that you require some server side programming like java so to create a dynamic page that means you have to generate a page instantly if you don't have a page it will generate a new page depending upon the request and that is possible with the help of servlets so we'll see a basic example of adding two numbers using servlet so for that first we require a project so we'll go we'll open an adbeans make sure you have at least one of the server or glassfish or apache so when you go to server you can see I have uh, I have two Apache and two Glassfish because I'm working with two different NetBeans IDE. One is NetBeans 8.0, second is NetBeans 8.0.1. So with those two NetBeans, I have two uh, servers. We'll use one of them. Okay. So for that, uh, let's get a new project. Again, in this, we'll be having option of uh, Java Web uh, or Java application. So this time, we have to go for Java Web. Then we'll say next. Uh, we'll give this project name as serve demo. Then we'll say next. And here we have to select one of the server. Okay. Now this time, uh, since Apache is more famous, we'll go for Apache Tomcat. And yeah, so latest version of uh, EE. And we'll say next. And then uh, these are the frameworks which are available. But time being, we are, as we are starting, we'll not go for any framework. We'll go for simple web application and we'll say finish now once you click on finish uh, this is your project and this page which is index.html is your uh, you can say a default page or a home page right so let me sh uh, show you something if I write here it's hello world so this is my page now and this is my uh, project and again this is my website basically so if i go to my website and it will say enter which is mean run it will call this page which is home page so again for i'm running uh, this for the first time it will take some time for deployment uh, okay and the output is hello world right so this is your uh, this is your IP address, which is uh, the same machine, so localhost. This is the port number of your server. Uh, for Apache Tomcat, it is 8. Point, uh, sorry, 8084. And then this is your project name, which also serves as your uh, website name. And then we are calling a page called as index.html. So enter. So it will give the same page. If you don't write this content, still it will give the same page because that's your home page. Right. Now, we don't want this thing. What we want is we have to ask, uh, we, ha we will send two numbers to server. Server will add those two numbers and will give me the feed, uh, response, right? For that, what we need is, first we need here, uh, we need to ask a user to enter two numbers. That is, uh, uh, first number and second number. For that, you say enter first number and we'll say input. Okay, for text field in HTML, you have something called as type text, and then we have to provide a name. For time, it will say name is T1, and then we require a break statement here. So we'll say BR. Okay. We'll say enter second number, and then we'll again we'll say input type text and we'll provide a name as yeah right guess is to t2 and then we require a button also so we'll say br and we require a button on which when i click on this button it will say add 
so we'll say input type uh, this should be submit and then we'll say uh, value the visible content it should be like uh, add okay now if I run this code uh, let, let me run this uh, so again I can run the whole project or you can run the uh, one file I don't need this head of head headers so we'll say remove to make it more simple and then let me say run well, in this code, I got uh, enter first number, enter second number, and an add button, right? This is this is your value of the submit. Now, if I enter the value as 4, uh, 43 and 7, when I say add, nothing happened, right? It's because you have created a button, but there's no action. There's no action on this button. And for that, you have to provide something called as something on which, like if you click on this button, it will it will do some task that you can define with the help of a form tag which we can define it as action okay and then we'll call something called as add again what's that add means we'll see later so if we have action add then we have to um, mention a method uh, when you talk about method we have two options either we can go for get or we can go for post watch those we'll see later so we have get and post and then we have to for close this form tag now, now if I run this code, you can see there is some modification like if I enter the details as 45 and 23, when I say add, okay, when I say add, it's calling something called as add, which is not available. It's because we are not creating any data or we have not created any file. So what this add is, this is your Java code in which you can add two numbers but because Java has the power to work with variables in which you can add two numbers. So for that, uh, we require a web, uh, we require a, a code which will work on a server. Now, if you talk about a server, it, it will not work with JVM. It will work on some server, some uh, web server or uh, app server. Now, if you talk about those type of servers, one of them is Tomcat. So we have to use Java on Tomcat. So if you talk about those technology where you can work with Java on web server or app server you need something called a servlets so servlets are the web component which works which resides on server which executes on server and which gives output on client machine so to do that we have to right click on your project and we'll say new servlet now you have to give a name to a servlet we'll give add because we are calling add from our html code and then we'll say next here you have two options either you can tick, tick mark it or you can skip this now, if you give a tick mark here, it will add the entry of your servlet into a file called as web.xml, which defines the underlying servlets, underlying classes are the servlets, right? So we'll say finish. We are not checking this part. Now, since we are not checking it, we need to mention somewhere that the below class is a servlet. And for that, we have to use something called as annotations. And annotation here is its web servlet. So your web servlet here is an annotation which defines this add class is a servlet. So whenever a user requests a add page, that means you can see the output. We are requesting a add, right? A slash add. It will call this servlet. Okay. Now, uh, then what next? Uh, We'll remove this text again. Let let me just uh, remove this remaining part. We'll say a default class. We'll say a class, and we'll remove of this package. I want this package to become automatically. So remove delete. Now what we have is we have a class add. Now this class is not a normal class. We have to convert this into a servlet. For that we have to mention it as it extends HTTP servlet. It means it will fetch important features of a servlet to this add class and since uh, when you talk about a, a web server it will have a web container now web container should know which uh, which servlet the user is asking for and for that you have to mention this annotation now since we are using with uh, we are working with inbuilt classes we have to import packages how to import package you can click on this error and then there will be option of add import so you have to click on this add import here same goes for this, you have to say add import. Other way around, you can go with your keyboard shortcuts and the keyboard, short for, uh, keyboard shortcut for this 
import packages is control shift i now now since uh, as a user you have to call this add servlet now this add servlet will provide you some service and that's why when you say you are, you are working with something or your servlet works or it does something everything uh, in java when you say does something we have to use something called as methods and the method here will be called as service now this service will take two parameters one is request object one will be request object what time in will say it is as rdq and second will be response object so it will be servlet uh, response and we'll say it is as res now now if we talk about a servlet it goes in many uh, different types the first one was a servlet which was an interface uh, then it, then we had a generic servlet which is the abstract class then we have this http servlet and then you have created your own servlet then all these transact transitions uh, fr from serv service we have to use some new methods Okay, now service and those methods work in the same way. So time being will start, we'll go with service, then we'll convert this service into some other method. Now, now uh, we have this object called as request. So when a user sends you a request, it will send all these details in this object. Now, as a, as a server, when you send details or response to your client, you have to send all the details in response object. Now, our first task is to take input from user, right? And again, we'll store that data in a variable. So we'll say int i. Now, if you say int i, you have to take input from user in which a user is entering data in this field called as t1. So in any way, we have to fetch data from t1, right? And this t1 will be enclosed in this request object. So that's why we have to say it's request dot get parameter from t1. Now the problem is when you say get parameter, it will give you a string type of data. What we want is an integer, right? So we have to convert this into integer dot pass it. And we need a J variable also. So we'll say copy and paste. This time it should be J and we'll say it is as T2. Now what next? Uh, we have to add these two numbers. So we'll say int k equal to i plus j. Uh, oh, j. Now, now we have to send this detail which is k to a client machine. When you say client machine, client should have a software where you can print this data. And those client softwares are called as web browsers. Now question arises: how to create a web page? It's very simple. If you, want, if you want to create a web page, you just have to open a notepad. You just have to open a notepad and you have to, now, let's imagine I want to create a web page in which I have only, I want to show hello. That's it. So you, what you will say is you have to type HTML codes, like HTML open, HTML close. But unfortunately, if you just type hello and save this in on desktop as uh, demo dot html and if you say save and just need to open with a browser so we'll say uh, we can go for any browser yeah let's go for chrome you can see there's no html tag included in this file but still we are getting hello again now we have to make it bold so we'll, we have to use tags right so that tags is just give you some fancy layout to your text. That's it. Now when you say bo b, it will make that data bold. So if I save and refresh this page, it becomes bold, right? It's that simple. Now what it means, you writing tags is not compulsory. Whenever you use this tag, you can use it. Now if I print this data k, I don't need any HTML tags. So what I can do, I can just print this data to user machine. But when you say you have to print something on user machine, you require object of print writer. So we'll name this object as out and we'll say res. Since we have to send data to the response object, we'll say get writer. And then uh, now we have to import the package. So we'll use control shift i package is imported now the problem is there, there there is a chance that this uh, this get writer will give you an error 
So for that, you have to handle the exception. Will so close I/O exception. So this will handle the exception now. And then you have to print data. So we'll say print ln. It will say k. That's it. So when you say when you run this file, it will call uh, add servlet by passing two values t1 and t2. And then it, this add will re, uh, get these details and it will add these two numbers and it will print it. So let me try, let me run this code now. Run. Let me add two numbers, it's 89 and 67 and addition, addition is it's 156, right? It's so simple, right? Okay, so this is your first servlet code. I hope you uh, you got some details about servlet. Uh, we'll continue with the topic in my next video. Uh, do subscribe for the further videos. Thank you so much.